The following program is presented by Gatorland, the alligator capital of the world. Florida is a great place for kids. We have beaches, rivers, lakes, swamps, woods, and lots of warm sunshine. It's like one big playground. But kids need to understand that there are dangers in all those fun places, and sometimes right in their own backyards. Now, most kids are fascinated by snakes and alligators, reptiles which top the list of our most dangerous animals. A bite from a poisonous snake can land a kid in the hospital in a great deal of pain. An encounter with a hungry alligator can have a more frightening result. There are many varieties of snakes in Florida, and only a few of them are poisonous. And alligators can be found everywhere there is fresh water, from one end of the state to the other. Sooner or later, a child is likely to encounter a snake or alligator, and knowing how to react can prevent a load of problems. So, listen to a man who knows as much about snakes and alligators as anyone in Florida. Hi, this is Tim Williams, the Dean of Gator Wrestling at Gatorland, right here in Orlando, Florida. And we're going to talk today about alligator and snake safety and teach you some of the do's and don'ts about these marvelous animals and maybe help you get along with them a little better if you run into one. You may have seen Tim Williams on television, maybe even at your school. Tim started learning about reptiles from a legendary Florida expert, Ross Allen. And for more than 30 years, Tim has been handling snakes, alligators, and crocodiles. He's now at Gatorland in Orlando. Tim and his co-workers often take reptiles to schools around Florida for educational programs and to give kids a chance to see and touch them. No one is more qualified to talk about and demonstrate the dangers of poisonous snakes and alligators. We have a lot of different types of snakes in Florida, 69 different types to be exact and only six of them are dangerous. That means they have fangs and venom and are poison. If they bite, they could kill you. Most of our snakes, like this yellow rat snake, are harmless. Now they have little teeth, and their teeth are designed to help them catch their food, like mice and rats. They get a good grip, and they wrap their bodies around the mouth of the rat, then they squeeze it to death, and then they swallow it whole head first. This yellow rat snake may bite you if you get too close, because he's trying to defend himself. The trick is to learn how to recognize the dangerous snakes from the ones that are not dangerous so that if, unfortunately, you become the victim of a snake bite, you know what bit you and you know what to do. We're going to take a close-up look at all six of Florida's poisonous snakes, beginning with one of the most dangerous, the coral snake, which could be hiding right around your house. This is the coral snake. One of our prettiest snakes we have here in Florida. Some people call them candy cane snakes because they have striping that goes all the way around their body. Red, yellow, black bands. Absolutely beautiful animal. And a lot of times, young children like to pick this snake up because it's so pretty. Again, we tell people all the time, don't pick up snakes of any kind. If you pick up snakes, you could get hurt. This particular snake belongs to a group of snakes that also include the cobras. They have a neurotoxin, which means it affects your nervous system. Short fixed fangs, and when they bite, sometimes they hang on, they put in their venom, and they've been known to kill as quickly as 30 minutes. A very dangerous snake. The way we recognize this snake is quite easy. There's a lot of poems out there about the coral snake, but we tell people to remember something real simple, a black nose. That's how we recognize the coral snake. He has a black nose. There's a mimic out there that looks quite a bit like him, and we're not even going to discuss that snake because the more we do, the more confusing it might get. When people are cleaning up around the gardens and around the house, they might accidentally grab one of these fellas, and that creates a big problem. Coral snakes are one of the snakes that lay eggs. Mama snakes lay her eggs underneath the ground, the mulch and debris, and then she crawls off and leaves them alone. The little baby snakes look just like the adults. They have very, very small fangs, however, and it's difficult for them to bite and get their venom in, but even a baby coral snake can be very dangerous. Much larger than the coral snake, and a whole lot noisier, is the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake, which is found throughout Florida. One of the things that's important to realize is that as professionals, we are required to obey certain laws just like everybody else. 
venomous snakes in Florida are covered by laws. There are laws saying you have to have a permit, a special permit to have venomous snakes. If one's in your yard, you're supposed to have a permit before you try to catch it, which is a bad thing to do anyway. And when you transport the animals, they have to be locked up and identified. This is for safety purposes. We are very serious about safety at Gatorland, and you should be too. This snake is locked up in a box, a special box, extra box here. And you notice I don't reach in there and grab him with my hands. I use a snake hook. Don't you try to do this unless you've been trained. This is for the pros only. Isn't that beautiful? Cracky, isn't she a beaut? <laughs> oh, me. That is a gorgeous animal. That's an eastern diamondback rattlesnake, the largest of our venomous reptiles found here in the United States. Their fangs can be up to an inch long. They're a heavy-bodied snake, and they're a live bearer. When mama has her babies, the babies come out alive. They don't lay eggs like the coral snake. And you notice they have a very thick body. They have this diamond-shaped pattern across their back. And usually at the end of the tail, they have a rattle. Probably more Florida kids and adults are bitten by the pygmy rattlesnake than any other snake. That's because these little guys might be found around your house and even on a school playground. Another one of the most common poisonous snakes we have here in the state of Florida is the pygmy rattlesnake. Doesn't get very big, a little over 30 inches is the record and they're hard to recognize. They have a gray ground color with black splotches and a little reddish orange stripe along the back. For their size, they're a tough little snake. They don't realize they're so small, so they make up for it with a bad attitude. They like to hide underneath things, and a lot of times people accidentally come across them because they are small. They don't see them very well. They're not wearing shoes. They step on them and get bit, or they put their hands where they can't see. So we have to be real careful with this guy. He's got retractable fangs. In other words, his fangs are folded up in the roof of his mouth and when he bites, he opens his mouth up just like a rattlesnake and bites down, injects his venom, which is a hemotoxin. In other words, it affects the blood system, the red blood cells, creates a lot of tissue destruction and a lot of pain and could possibly kill people. It's a very, very dangerous snake. The pygmy rattlesnake tends to bite a lot of children, not because they like to bite children, because kids want to pick things up and play with them. Pygmy rattlesnakes don't look big. They don't look intimidating, but they can be. If you're gonna reach underneath something or move something, pick up a rock or some sticks or leaves or logs or what have you, turn them over first with a rake or a shovel or a stick. Make sure there's nothing underneath there like this snake. This is a pygmy rattlesnake. If you reach down there to try to catch him and show off like you see people doing on television, you can get yourself hurt and hurt real bad. You always want to use some type of an apparatus to move these animals. The best advice is don't catch them at all. This six-year-old boy was seriously hurt by a pygmy rattler on a school playground in Tampa. He went to the hospital in a great deal of pain, had to spend several days in intensive care, and had a really nasty looking finger where the snake bit him. How did it happen? He reached down to touch the snake. I fought a snake and, and then when I touched it and, and, and then when I touched it again, it jumped up and bit. Here's a snake you need to watch for around lakes, rivers, and creeks. It's the poisonous cottonmouth moccasin, which can be more aggressive than other venomous snakes. This is one of the best known snakes we have in the state of Florida, and that's the cottonmouth or the water moccasin, all one and the same. Usually found around slow moving bodies of water, creeks, ditches, lakes, ponds. And the way we identify this snake is right on the side of the face. There's a dark brown stripe runs right down the side of the face. That's the mark we look for. These animals are notorious for aggressive manner. They have folding up fangs in the front of their mouth and they have a hemotoxic venom, just like rattlesnakes that affects the red blood cells, destroys tissues. Uh, a bite from one of these snakes creates an awful lot of tissue destruction and swelling. It's very painful, could possibly kill. These snakes are known for their aggressive manner, sometimes even swimming towards people, but quite often they defend themselves by coiling up in a rather tight ball or tight coil. They'll shake their tail and vibrate their tail. They'll rock their head back and show that cottony white inner mouth. 
and display their fangs, and that's where the name Cottonmouth came from, was that cottony white in her mouth. These are live bears. Mama has her babies alive, she just kind of squirts them out, and the baby cottonmouths look very much like copperheads because they're a close related animal, and they have a lot of strong cross banding that goes across the body. And as the animal gets older, they start to take on a darker appearance. Very thick, heavy bodied, and a very, very dangerous snake. One of the ones to remember. The brown stripe on the side of the face, that's the mark to look for. Now we come to a snake which sometimes appears to be dressed in desert camo, the southern copperhead, which is only found in northern Florida. This snake is the southern copperhead. It has a very limited range in Florida, mainly found up in North Florida and over in the panhandle section. Uh, this animal is re close related to the cottonmouth. They, they belong to the same group of snakes, and they bite quite a few people. One of the reasons is because people are hiking and climbing and getting around rock outcroppings and moving around in areas where the copperheads live, and you can see the markings camouflage them very well, and people put their hands or their feet where the snake is, and they end up getting a bite. Most of the time when snakes bite people, it's because people are being careless, not watching what they're doing, and accidentally run into the snake. And more often than not, people get bitten by poisonous snakes because they're trying to show off, catch the snake, or kill it. And the best advice is the only advice, and that's leave them alone. The final snake on our most dangerous list is the canebrake or timber rattlesnake, also only found in northern Florida. It's called a canebrake because it's also found in the sugarcane fields of Louisiana. This is the canebrake rattlesnake, which is also a subspecies of the timber rattlesnake. The way we recognize this snake is it's a large body, has large rattles and rattles on the tail, and there's a stripe that goes right down the back right along here. The canebrake rattlesnake has a very limited range in Florida. It's up in North Florida in the Panhandle section, and it's not seen down through Central and Southern Florida. You've seen the really dangerous snakes of Florida, but you should know that any snake this pretty yellow rat snake, for example, can and will bite. Look at here, one of the stars of Gatorland, corn snake. We use these snakes to help demonstrate to folks what snakes are about and teach them about them. And that's what we want you to remember. There are some dangerous snakes in Florida, six of them. Don't pick up snakes, because if you don't know what you're grabbing, you could grab the wrong thing and get yourself hurt and hurt real, real bad. If you want to learn about snakes, Go up on our webpage, www.gatorland.com, or swing by our park, or go to any zoo or facility where they keep snakes and have educational materials. The internet's another good place. Learn about them, watch them, observe them, enjoy them, but don't pick them up. Leave them alone. Leave them to the experts. Here are some other things you need to know about snakes. Don't ever think you are faster than a snake. You might think you can give a rattler a quick kick or a nudge with your foot and pull back before he can strike. You can't. A snake strike is faster than the blink of an eye. If you live near a river or creek that floods after a heavy rain, you might find snakes you haven't seen before in the street, in your yard. Floodwaters will drive poisonous and non-poisonous snakes from their normal habitats. Stay away from them. They're already under stress and they might be even more aggressive. Here's some more important information from Tim. If a snake gets close to you, stand still. Don't move. That could excite the snake and cause it to bite. This is hard to do, but if you're too close to back away safely, remain still until the snake crawls off. Then once you're out of harm's way, you can step aside and enjoy the animal for what he really is one of nature's great little creatures. A fact is that all snakes will bite. They all have teeth. It's just that some have special teeth called fangs and they have special saliva called venom and when they bite they could possibly kill you. Another myth is that all snakes, poisonous snakes, have triangular shaped heads. That's not true. Rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, pygmy rattlesnakes, they have triangular shaped heads but a coral snake doesn't. He doesn't have a triangular shaped head, and some snakes, when they get scared, will flatten out their bodies and make their heads look triangular because they know it'll scare us, because they know that we're afraid of that. And that's what we should be, afraid of that. Stay away from them. And there's something else we need to remember. 
when a snake bites you, you don't want to do things like put on a tourniquet and cut off the blood flow. That could cause problems. And for goodness sakes, don't cut it open. That hurts. The snake bite's going to hurt already. And if you go cutting it open, it's going to hurt worse. And you may even do more damage than the snake did. So the best thing to remember is do just what the snake wants you to do. And that's leave him alone. Don't catch him. Don't kill him. Don't try to pick him up. And for goodness sakes, don't play or scare somebody with a snake because you could cause somebody to hurt themselves. And you may get hurt yourself. You know, folks call us all the time at Gatorland and want to know, what do we do if we get snake bit? The best advice, the best snake bite treatment? A phone. Cell phone, phone at your house, and three magic numbers. 911. Call the emergency people and let the professionals take care of it. Or get to the professional medical treatments like emergency rooms or care centers as quickly as you can. Learn how to identify the snake. That's the best advice. No, wait. That's the second best advice. The best advice is leave the snake alone to begin with. Now let's turn our attention to alligators. Rule number one, don't swim in any unguarded lake, river, or stream unless you absolutely know it is gator free. It wasn't so many years ago that alligators were endangered. Now they're everywhere. They've even been found in backyard swimming pools. Tim Williams knows plenty about gators. He used to wrestle them. Nice job, buddy. These are not my friends. I love them, I respect them, but they're not pets. These are alligators, and they're very dangerous animals. What I just did, you don't do. We're here at Gatorland, the alligator capital of the world, and we're gonna learn about some gator safety and some things not to do if you're in gator country. Just imagine what those jaws could do to you, or to your dog. I told you he jumped at you probably will not see a gator as big as this one in the wild. Now these guys don't have to compete for food. They're well fed, and they grow larger than those in the wild. But even a three-foot gator can do plenty of damage, and a six-footer can take a small child right underwater. Large alligators in the wild might only eat five or six times a year. Alligators don't have to eat every day. They'd like to, and when we feed them, it causes a problem. You throw feed to an alligator, and alligators start to associate what, us with that food, and then they come around instead of running off like they're supposed to do. And another very dangerous time to be around an alligator is when you have a mother with a nest. Springtime, that's when the alligators go up on the nest, they build them up on the banks, and mama gator loves her babies and loves her house, and she doesn't want anybody around messing with them. What do gators do when things fall in the water? They grab it and they eat it. Alligators don't chew up their food. They get a good bite and a good grip and swallow it whole. And they're too big to eat in one bite. They roll around with it or shake it violently until they just rip off a bite-sized piece. Alligators are dangerous animals and we have to learn some safety rules. One is don't feed them. Don't feed any wild animals. That's a bad habit to get into. The other thing we want to remember is that alligators like to hunt and sneak up on their prey. So if they can sneak up on you and catch you, that's the best thing. So don't swim at night. That's when you're in the water, you look small, you're not afraid, the gator sneaks up, grabs you, and then you got a lot of problems. And another thing you don't want to do is ever try to catch or kill an alligator. Not only is it against the law, but it's a very, very dangerous thing to do. Experts like myself and the folks in Gatorland work all day long with alligators and do the very best that we can do not to get in trouble. But every now and then we'll have a mistake. And when the experts get hurt, that means that folks that aren't used to being around them have a better chance of being injured. Here are a couple of more tips about alligators. If you're in a boat or canoe and you come across an alligator, he's probably going to just swim away. If it's been fed by boaters, or if it has a nest and babies nearby, it may approach. Just keep your hands and feet in the boat, don't bother the gator, and keep moving. If you're fishing from the shore of a river or lake, keep your eyes open as you move from place to place. You might come across a gator sunning on the bank. He'll probably run into the water. If he doesn't, stay away. Find another place to fish. Every once in a while, an alligator will try to steal a fish you're trying to catch. If that happens to you, try to pull the fish ashore as quickly as possible and stay away from the water's edge. If the gator grabs your fish, 
let him have it. Do not go into the water to try to retrieve a fish ever. The best way to learn about the reptiles in Florida is right here at a place like Gatorland. You can get up close to alligators and snakes. You can learn how to get along with these animals. The best lesson is to learn. Don't feed them. Don't try to catch them. Don't kill them. Leave them alone. Come on down and let the experts teach you how to get along with these things. If you have a problem with a nuisance alligator, you know, one that hangs around your yard and won't leave, don't try to move him yourself. Call the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission at 1-888-404-3922. Thank you for watching our video. If you have more questions, visit the Gatorland website at www.gatorland.com.